Hi, my name is Dave. Today we're going to look at a significant and important piece of Takahashi history. This is the TS-80. The year is 1970. Earlier this year, Takahashi introduced this scope, the TS-65D, the first triplet semi apochromat to be introduced in Japan as a commercial product. Um, they were saying, hello Goto, hello Nikon, wake up, there's a new player. Later in the year, they introduced this one. This is the TS-80 triplet semi apochromat It came either on a pier or on a tripod. And they were again saying, hmm, are you awake yet Goto? Are you awake yet, Nikon? This scope features the same basic mount as the TS-65D type. Uh, it's the basically the D mount with some small variations. Well, maybe bigger variations because they're mostly internal. They put better bearings in there and, and stuff. They put a bigger right ascension gear on. Uh, but it, it's basically the same as the D mount. It has the same basic... Uh, draw tube kind of focuser with a nice, really, really nice draw tube. This is a, a super deluxe 8x40 finder. I love this finder. This finder, I like to have this finder on every scope I own. It's just superb. For the counterweights, they put these on a, these are thread, it's on a big threaded rod. And, uh, I do not like this. It's it's supposed to be more accurate, more and easier to um, adjust it and so forth. When you're going to take these weights off, you have to take this whole thing off, and the only easy way to do that is just grab it here. This is really uncomfortable. This is threaded and it's not terribly sharp, but it's it's not very comfortable and it's a pain. You have to unwind, unscrew the whole thing. So anyway, I don't like that. Although it looks classy as all get up. So the D-type mount is, is really good for this scope. It's just fine. It's not overkill. I thought you might enjoy seeing a comparison between the TS-80 and its little brother, the TS-50. Very distinct similarities, but boy, look at the size difference. And also, you're going to need different size wrenches for each telescope. In 1970, when Takashi introduced this scope, they claimed that it could beat the Dawes limit. That is, uh, it could resolve closer double stars than it should theoretically be able to do. So I decided to test that. One of the stars they claimed it could split was a star called Eta Orionis. So I took this scope out last night and I tried to split Eta Orionis. Now, my seeing was not perfect, uh, but here is my result. Here's what Eta Orionis looked like to me last night through the telescope. That's about what it looked like at the best. In 1972, Takahashi released the apochromat version of the TS-80. What was that? How did it work? What was the difference between the apochromat and the semi-apochromat? really wanted to know the answer to those questions. Here's the announcement of the TS-80 Apochromat. This must have been a huge shockwave. A very big deal. The first Apochromat made and marketed in Japan. Here I have the TS-80 set up side by side. One is the Apple, the other is the semi-Apple. And you can't tell just from looking. 
The only way you can tell for sure is to look on the engraving on the lens cell. That'll tell you. The stability on this pier is superb, absolutely superb. It's just as good as the stability on the tripod. This, by the way, is where they balance. They do balance further back than you might expect. That's because there's a lot of glass up here. Okay, let's talk about the uh, design of the TS-80, the optical design. Uh, this curve is, is from a catalog produced by uh, Takahashi. And it gives you an idea of the various configurations that are possible from a fluoride apochromat down to an achromat. Now, the simplest kind of lens is an achromat. This would be the curve of an achromat. This represents the curve of the semi-apochromat. Uh, you can see that it's considerably improved. This is uh, essentially the focal plane here. The semi-apochromat is considerably improved over the achromat. So it offers quite a bit better images than the achromat. The apochromat makes further improvements the curve for the apochromat comes in like this, and it crosses in three places. It's an apochromat. The main thing is, though, that here in the, you know, this is about the peak of the visual spectrum right in here. Right in through there, it's really, really close to the lines. Now, <laughs> fluorite, and I presume this is, yeah, I know this is a fluorite triplet apochromat, would have a curve that's like that. It's right on the line. Can't get optically any better than that. What's the configuration? Well, first of all, it's going to be essentially the same as the TS65D type and the S type. The special biconcave lens in the middle is made of a special KZF2 Kurz flint. And here are actual diagrams showing what these things are about. First of all, for reference, there's just a standard achromat. Here's the semi-apochromat we were just discussing with the special flint element in the middle here. This shows the basically the correction in uh, three or four different colors. The main ones are of interest are the C and F um, and E. The G is way off. That G is a uh, deep blue, I think, and a deep uh, violet. Anyway, so that is a not great consequence. Uh, and the scale down here, you may not be able to see it, but it's, it's quite close. It's a very, very nice optic. The apochromat, according to Takahashi, it says a new kind of glass apochromat. So the apochromat is not fluorite. It's a new kind of glass. They don't say what it is. It might be some sort of an ED glass. Um, the difference being that this, it comes in a little bit closer here. The lines come in a bit closer, so it's a more improved optic. And it does bring that G line in, so it brings the, the ultraviolet or uh, violet line in closer. Um, and none of these compare to a triplet Apochromat made with calcium fluoride. That thing is just dead on. I mean, it is completely, absolutely flat. So anyway, the, the apochromat that I have is not made with fluoride. I'm almost 100% sure it's not made of fluoride. But it's made with a new kind of glass. I have no idea what that kind of glass is. I'm guessing it must be some sort of an ED glass. What a deal. What a can of worms I've opened up here with this thing. Here's the new kind of glass apochromat compared with a, a modern FC76 F7.8 fluorite doublet. Uh, you can see it not bad, does pretty well. Here's a picture just to prove that the lenses are not identical, the apo and the semi-apo. The apo has different thicknesses. The overall lens on the semi-apo, the overall lens triplet, uh, all three elements together, is a bit thicker than the apple. That proves that they're different, but as far as what they are, I still don't know what the apple is made of.
I don't know what the kind of glass is. I know it's not the same as the semi-apple. This is a famous book about testing astronomical telescopes by Souter. Wonderful book. I want to show you what the star test showed on both the apo and the semi-apo. This pattern here, essentially perfect optics, inside and outside focus. Both the apo and the semi-apo look just exactly like that. The one small difference is that the semi-apo has an overall aura of a little bit of color to it. Very, very subtle, hard to see. I performed several additional optical tests on these telescopes. I looked at the limb of the moon for chromatic aberration. I saw none in either scope, none that I could detect. Jupiter, no color around Jupiter whatsoever. Nice dot against a perfectly black background. I compared them with a four inch ED Apo F9, uh, stopped down to 80 millimeters. So they're approximately the same telescope at that point. And I saw the identical, identically the same images. So everything to me looks like the Apo and the semi Apo are effectively perfect telescopes. The very subtle color difference uh, was only visible in the out of focus diffraction patterns. The TS80 Apo cost about twice as much as the TS80 semi-apple. If I had been shopping in those days for a telescope, I'm not sure if I would have been willing to spend the extra money. Both of those were considerably less expensive than comparable Nikon or Goto Kogaku. No matter what the difference between the TS80 apple and the TS80 semi-apple, you cannot deny the importance and significance of the TS80 telescope. It absolutely made the reputation for Takahashi. And it's possible that Takahashi would not exist today had this telescope not been a success. I hope you've enjoyed our little trip down the rabbit hole with the TS-80 Apo and the TS-80 Semi-Apo. Thank you for joining me.